Hey, David Brucey here with another three for all, and this is three Red Beach tapping licks from 1989. And Red Beach is a monster a guitar player known basically, you know, for being the guitarist from Winger back in the day. Um, but he's also played with Dokken and White Snake and Shaka Khan and a whole bunch of people. A lot of people definitely know Reb from, you know, tapping. Um, you know, he's kind of famous for all these just wild and crazy uh, tapping licks. And, you know, definitely Eddie Van Halen helped popularize, you know, tapping. And there's a whole bunch of other guitarists, you know, before Van Halen even, uh, that were tapping. And, um, but he definitely helped popularize and kind of organize, you know, some of the strategies and techniques and approaches uh, to using tapping. And Reb definitely, uh, you know, was one of those guitarists that came out after Van Halen and was obviously influenced by him, but he, in a lot of ways, I feel, kind of pushed uh, the technique and the approach even further. All right, the licks we're going to look at in this lesson come from a somewhat famous uh, live, you know, guitar solo uh, that Reb did back in 1989, uh, touring the first Winger album. And this solo excerpt, or this clip, uh, actually appears on his instructional video, Cutting Loose, um, which I think that was like DCI or REH, you know, or one of those companies, uh, back in the day. And that's actually a good video, uh, minus the leather chaps and the super perm. Um, but everything else in that video is awesome. You know, I mean, he's breaking down a lot of licks. Uh, he plays a few of his songs on there. I think Black Magic's on there. There's some cool stuff, you know, happening on that instructional video. Okay, well, aside from the clip that appears on his instructional video, I have seen a few other bootlegs of this same solo from around that same tour. Um, it's not necessarily the exact same performance, you know, it's like a different show from a different city um, But it's the same, you know, basic solo. Um, so you can find multiple versions of this, you know, with different uh, quality levels um, But I've kind of cut up a few of the licks, uh, you know, kind of like what we did with the Warren Demartini uh, lesson But now we're gonna do it with Red Beach. So, uh, you know, once again uh, You should use YouTube and go back and watch, you know, some old classic uh, you know, whether it's 80s, 90s, it could be something current, too. There's still guitars out there that whip out these unaccompanied, you know, kind of, you know, show, uh, you know, kind of show the world what they can do, uh, guitar solos. And you can learn and pick up so many cool licks and ideas, um, you know, just from kind of examining and watching and attempting to learn uh, some of those wild, you know, just uh, kind of show off, you know, Evil Knievel uh, guitar licks. Well, the first lick is actually uh, one of the first licks that you hear Reb play uh, during the solo. And it's kind of loosely based around uh, E major 7. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to investigate what uh, your fret hand is doing. And once we learn that, then we're going to tap into, uh, you know, pun intended, we're going to tap into what the right hand's doing next. So it's kind of an E major 7 sound. And uh, what he's playing, it's really clever. Um, start on the D string. And we're going to stretch from B to uh, a D sharp. You know, so there's the fifth and the seventh in the key of E. By the way, all of this is uh, uh, going to be tuned down a half step. And the solo itself kind of is centered around the key of E. It does move into some different tonalities, but it's primarily in the key of E. Um, so right here we've got the fifth and the seventh. And then we're going to do the same thing on uh, the G string. So there you've got 913 on the D and the G, and there's your uh, E major 7 arpeggio. Which is really cool, because there's, you know, B, D sharp, E, and G sharp. And there's the four notes you need for E major 7. So there, once he, uh, you know, passes through the, the D and the G string, then he grabs G sharp and B on the B string. So the, uh, you know, the fingering changed a little bit, so it's 913, 913, 912. And then as far as what you're tapping, you're going to tap E, B, and E um, here on the D, G, and uh, B strings. And that would be, you know, 16, 16, and 17. So when you put this together, it sounds really cool. So here's the clip of him playing this uh, in a solo. And as you could see and you could hear, he starts moving around. So he starts there. And then he basically moves down the whole step. And then he 
kind of mimics the pattern there on the A, D, and G strings. And then he moves it down to low E, A, and D. Um, we're starting with that first shape. I'm going to uh, go slow here. Um, down a whole step uh, to D major 7. And then he moves uh, between the A, D, and G strings, and there he's really just kind of hitting this uh, 7, 11, and 14 pattern. And then he kind of does the same thing on the low E, A, and D strings too. Right? So uh, you put it all together and kind of fly through it, and it sounds really cool. Something like that. The next example is uh, really cool, uh, kind of an open, uh, open string tapped idea, and I'll go ahead and play the clip first so you can hear what we're going to do. This is a really cool uh, lick, and I like this idea. So it actually starts off uh, with this glorified uh, E5, and He's tapping basically the 12th fret on the high E and the 12th fret on the B. And then uh, when he taps the high E at the 12th, he lets off you know, the open uh, high E string. And then he hammers on to the 7th fret here on uh, the high E, and that's the note B. So he tapped E, played an open E, and then you know sounded the 5th right there on the 7th fret. And then he taps the 12th fret on the B, releases that to the open B, and then he hammers on E, which is the root. So he's kind of doing like this mirror uh, image between E's and B's, and it really does kind of play with your ear. It's cool. Something like that. And he keeps the note to the 12th fret, then he relocates uh, the fret hand to where you have the second fret on the B, and the fifth fret on the high E. And this is gonna kinda generate more of like an A9 kind of tonality. So he went from this to that. And then he moves all the way up to uh, seven and 11. So this is gonna be an E9 all of a sudden. And then he uh, basically relocates the uh, 11 to the 9th fret, and then that's going to be an E6 add 9. So there's some really interesting tonalities that pop out from doing this little sequence of uh, taps. So I'm, I'm going to go through that kind of slow. This last idea is really out there, and I like it uh, for sure. It's definitely uh, you know, an unusual uh, sequence. So uh, it kind of starts off with this variation of an old uh, Van Halen uh, tapping lick. And definitely Eddie, uh, especially around 1986, you know, somewhere around uh, the album 5150, basically, um, he started doing uh, this tapping lick a lot uh, around that time. And he did do it before that, but it really did seem like, especially you know, uh, when Van Halen kind of shifted uh, to having Sammy in the band. Uh, you can see him doing this all over Live Without a Net, you know, the, the famous uh, you know, concert video from that time period. So Eddie's lick is kind of based in E, which the solo we're looking at here from Red Beach uh, is based in E. Um, but think more like a minor pentatonic uh, kind of sound. So Eddie's lick would be this. <laughs> And there you can see we're basically just doing 12 and 15, and then we're tapping 17 on both the B and the high E, and it's this fast, rapid, 
you know, tapping like. Now, interestingly enough, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Rev Beach's solo starts with a similar tapping move, but instead of tapping uh, 17, now he's tapping 19. Which is, has a really cool sound. So here's the clip of uh, this lick that we're going to look at. So as you can see in here, I mean, this is a crazy lick, uh, but it starts off with that pattern. And I'm going to go really slow here. Um, but one thing I do want to point out before we just dive in, um, he's basically tapping this kind of chromatic uh, melody, and I really like the sound. So, um, you know, kind of the reverse of what we did uh, with one of the previous licks, uh, we're going to look at the tapping part first, and then we'll reveal, uh, you know, the fretted part. So the taps are going to start with that 19, and then you're going to go all the way up to 22. And then 21 to 22. And then 20 to 20. So you can hear like this little melody, right? Um, it's cool. It almost sounds like some weird like EDM tune or something. Um, so that's what the tapping notes are, right? Uh, double 19, double 22, and then 21, 22, and then double 20. All right, and then the left hand uh, is going to start with that Van Halen position there, the 12 and 15. So you're doing the double 19 taps with the 12 and 15. Then you're going all the way up to 22, you know, with the tapping. And then with the fret hand, you're going to grab uh, 15 and 19. And then when it does the 21, 22, you're going to shift back and do 12 and 14 on the high E and B. And then when it does the double 20, you're going to do uh, 12, 14 on the high E and 12, 13 on the B. Put that together and it's something like this. And as you can hear, it has a really interesting kind of modern futuristic sound. Uh, it almost sounds like aliens or something like chatter, you know, or conversation or something weird. All right, we'll leave some uh, comments and some feedback and be sure to subscribe to uh, Late Night Lessons and I'll be back with some more chord play and three for all and content uh, before you know it. Thank you.